Hey guys! Basically today what this video is about is just I'm going to tell my story of how I got here like as a Christian, um, as a teenager who's a Christian and yeah just pretty much just share my story. Um, and also I'm going to talk about finding what works for you. So um, and we'll get into that. I don't want to try to explain anything now. Um, so yeah let me just jump right in so my first thing is i wrote down some points on my phone if i'm looking at my phone but my first thing is i want to keep my energy up in this video because i'm such a chill relaxed late back nonchalant person that i can just like slip into it like this and be okay with it but energy is super important so i want to keep my energy up um how did i get here so if you know me now, um, in these, this previous time when it was happening, if you knew me then, you didn't know. But if you know me now, um, my story, and I've also did a video on this, I'll link it. Um, I was just talking to my friend, Kins, and she actually watched the video for the first time last night. And she's like, you should remake this video and put like more into it. So I'm going to link it, but I'm also probably going to remake it and just like talk a little bit more in depth. Um, if anybody wants to know more um but i struggled with depression and anxiety for seven years while i was going through it sorry excuse my hands i'm talking my hands um while i was going through it i can probably count on one hand how many people knew that i was going through it um there are people that knew but like only really one person knew the depth of it and that was my mom and she didn't even really know that much like I just I'm a really like keep to myself person like I don't really it's hard for me to open up and talk about things so um for me it was just something I lived through like it was just something I was just like okay this is what it is but I've always been a fighter so even in those moments even though I felt down and depressed I was still just like you know what we just gonna keep pressing through like it is what it is I feel sad but we just gonna keep pressing through um but it started off with just depression at first and then i noticed with a lot of people in a lot of cases now depression comes along with anxiety like depression brings anxiety and so i started suffering with anxiety too it started my depression started as um just me feeling very alone uh i so i I'm pretty much an only child. I have an older brother, um, biologically, but we're five and a half years apart, so that kind of explains that. So when he, um, when he got older, he, like, kind of went and did his thing, but he was, like, the only, like, constant other person that I had around me. So, um, around me consistently, like, on a frequent basis, and when he, like, got older and started living his life and doing stuff that he's supposed to do as an adult like I was like oh snap so it's just me now okay like I didn't have the only child syndrome like we were if you know me and my family we like the four of us we like this me my mom my dad my brother and still to this day we're still kind of like that but back then it was just like it's four of us we a unit so when he um started like living his life and doing what he's supposed to be doing because he's growing up i kind of had nobody else and then i just like from there it was like a down spiral like i just felt like i was alone um and the enemy played off of that um just like me thinking that i was alone and just also going through like some self-esteem issues when i was younger people <laughs> it's so funny to me because I really wasn't but like people used to call me fat I think I was a little bit like just chunkier than like um the average child or whatever but I wasn't fat and like people used to call me fat and stuff like that and I just I digress but it was just a lot on top of depression and all that stuff so I pretty much just was like I got to a point one day where I I I thought this, I was like, listen, it would be so much better off if I was dead. 
like all of this stuff would come to an end i wouldn't have these crazy thoughts in my head i wouldn't feel like i can't get up in the morning like i wouldn't feel like this if i was dead and that pretty much opened another door to the enemy that's like okay <laughs> you're depressed now i'm gonna bring thoughts of suicide in your head and thoughts of death and all that other stuff so that just it just kept spiraling out of hand it got to a point i remember in high school i would just come home and cry because like the thought not even the thought just being alone with my own thoughts like the way my mind was going and the thoughts in my head like it was just racing like i was like i don't want to be like somebody please come be around me because i don't want to like focus on the thoughts that's going through my head but they're going through my head so like what do i do so like literally just come home sit in this very spot that i'm sitting in now and just cry because it's like i did not want to hear these things um so that was also when anxiety introduced itself to me like i in high school is when anxiety started playing a part i did not uh, i remember my first anxiety attack it was crazy like crazy and i had a dream right before it like excuse me the attack started in my sleep <laughs> that's the crazy part um i had a dream right before it, and i was like this dream is crazy it was like some craziness like and i'll explain it in the other video but um i forgot to say in the beginning this is going to be like a two-part thing so yeah this is part one um it might be actually a three-part because we might do the testimony yeah we're gonna do a three-part video of the we going yeah you'll see but um yeah anxiety anxiety pretty much showed me what it was in that first moment i was sleeping i remember i woke up and like just felt like i could not breathe and that's pretty much what anxiety is like my body like I, it felt like my insides were shaking, but I like I would touch my body and I was like, it doesn't feel like I'm shaking, but my insides felt like they were shaking. Um, and that was pretty much how my anxiety attacks went. Like, I remember I wouldn't eat for a while, like, couldn't sleep, um, just lots of craziness. So I went through that stage. And then once I got out of high school, I was like listen i can't live like this like this is not okay like it's been seven years and things have only it was like up and down if you if you dealt with depression you know like there's ups and downs so like when you're around people and when you're laughing and when you're having fun and nobody knows anything's wrong like you're up for a while and then when all that goes away you're down so um it just got to a point where i was like listen this is not cool I'm not about to live like this no not doing it so I was like I know God well I believe in God because I now know that there's a difference between knowing God and believing in God at that time I believed in God um, and I had heard of like you know, you know you always hear this stuff about God doing stuff for people and delivering people and you know um, doing miracles for people and I was like but when is it gonna be my turn so <laughs> Um, I knew, I don't know if it was instincts, I don't know if it was growing up in church, I don't know what it was, but I knew, I was like, I know I have to do something in order for him to, you know, do it. In order for God to do for me what I wanted him to do for me, I had to do something for God, and that was pretty much live for him, obey his commands, like, I think it was probably growing up in church sorry guys it's like the wind is blowing like crazy outside so if you can hear it um sorry about that but yeah I was like I know I have to like you can't just get stuff like that's that's just not how the world works you don't just start obtaining stuff so um I was like okay well I'm just gonna start pursuing God I'm gonna start praying more I'm gonna start reading my bible more um and then going to church like for me I I was a person that struggled with fear a lot um so I just had to like start pushing myself like I said I'm a fighter like I refuse to be defeated like I'm pushing so that instinct just kicked in and I was like okay well I know that if I want God to do something for me like I have to um start living for him not just on the inside so not just like praying reading my bible and stuff like that and you know 
nobody sees that you know like if you live for god it has to be like an outward thing like people need to know so at church like when i would when they were doing like praise and worship i would like i i felt uncomfortable doing it i promise i know i f it feels so uncomfortable when you first do it like lift my hands like as a sign of worship as a sign of praise as a sign of surrenderance to god not because i wanted to show anybody anything but because it's like it's like being in a relationship with somebody like if you're dating somebody or if you're with somebody like you keeping that person a secret almost looks like you're ashamed of them or you don't want anybody to know and that's not that's not cool like if i love you i'm gonna say that i love you and i'm gonna show you off to the world so or show you off to whoever so it was the same thing with God. Like I, I was like, I have to raise my hands. Like I have to do something that shows, you know, like that I'm really pursuing this thing. Like I have to let people know. Like it just took a lot of me. Like I think that's when I started dying to myself, um, dying to self and being alive in Christ. I'll find the scripture and like write it somewhere down here, but. Um, that's when I started dying to myself, when I started pushing myself outside of here. And I'm still on a journey of dying to myself. I just want to put that out there. I, listen, he's dealing with me with dying to myself right now. Um, but that's when I started dying to myself. Like, it's okay to worship. It's okay to praise. Like, I promise you don't see as much results. And um, you won't see as much benefit if you don't. Like... Yes, you can go to the secret place as much as you want to, but if you live differently, if man doesn't see, if people don't see that about you, like, God is like, okay, so, yeah, cool, I can bless you for what you do in the secret place, but I can bless you even more if you would just, like, like, are you ashamed of me? Like, what is it? So, like, I would just push myself out of my comfort zone. I was like, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get this mess off of my life. Like, I cannot keep living like this. And, um yeah and that is pretty much how it went i just kept going and kept going and now i i don't know i don't know if the gift of joy is a thing but now it's something that i've acquired and it just it's so amazing um and it's crazy because i was actually in the secret place today and not to like disclose because the secret place is the secret place secret not to disclose anything like super private from my secret place i don't know he gives you a revelation for you to tell though but um i was there and i was just like overwhelmed with joy like i was laughing <laughs> like i don't know if you've ever seen anybody like in worship and they started laugh they start laughing it's because like they've caught the spirit of joy and like i do that so much when i'm worshiping so like i just caught myself laughing like i was like i'm happy and i felt like i don't know i just felt like holy spirit is like i'm happy too you know like it's just like it's such a joyous thing like and i didn't have that for so long so now to have that i'm just like i'm not letting this go um so yeah and that brings me to moving into what works for you so for me um being a christian this is uh what's the song pastor william mcdowell made a song called Oh, I don't remember the name of the song, but I know the words because this is a song that I listen to like over and over and over again. Because even after I was delivered, depression still tried to like sneak in there. I was like, nah, bro, I'm set free. Like, you can go somewhere with that. Basically, for me with Christianity, I've pretty much left behind everything that I that I thought I knew. So the song says, I've abandoned everything I've ever known. Now I surrender. My life is not my own. Um, I don't know anything else but God at this point like so for me like this is my literally saving grace because if I was still in depression with the way like the thoughts of death and suicide were consuming me I don't know that I would have taken my own life because I don't all right y'all um a little bit of a switch of locations basically family started coming home um I waited too late to record this video and I know it <laughs> so that's my fault but um i was saying that i don't necessarily know that i would have taken my own life but i know that um with the way that suicidal thoughts are set up and like just 
death thoughts are set up, I probably would have just like gotten to a point where I just stopped eating and just like kind of fizzled away um, or faded away. So I honestly think I would have been dead if it wasn't for just this willingness and this fight that God gave me to fight for my life, fight for other people's lives, um, this purpose that God put in my, put in my life. This topic is a little heavy, but um, so, well, this part is a little heavy, but yeah, so when, like, this is literally my saving grace. This is all I know. This is all I want to know. This is, this is it for me. Like, I found what works for me and um going into that you always have to have to have to be ready to give a reason for your faith most of the time giving a reason for your well the reason that you give for your faith is your testimony and that's pretty much the reason for my faith and i'm not just making this up first peter 3 15 first peter 3 15 reads but keep the Lord Christ holy in your hearts. Always be ready to answer anyone who asks you to explain about the hope you have. So, and that's the easy read version here. I'll read it in the King James Version. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give an answer to every man that asks, asketh you reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. And so basically that's my reason but that's because I found what worked for me and don't get me wrong this journey is going to keep going on and keep progressing and keep getting better until the day that we die or I die but everybody's journey is different and that's the one thing I want to iterate everybody's journey to finding God or either just finding something that works for you because and I want to address this now um well, I'll keep going. Everybody's journey is going to be different. Like God created all of us differently. So all of our journeys are going to be different. It's not always going to look the same as somebody else's. Yes, there may be similarities, but it's not going to be completely the same. You may have different testimonies. Like I know my kids, um, she, we have two totally different testimonies, but our journey of how God is like, um, God is like taking us through things. Um, with him is pretty freaking similar and it's weird <laughs> but it's just literally just finding what works for you but I also want to say this because I'm saying find what works for you um, I know this to be true just based off of um, revelation that God has given me that everyone will not choose God everyone won't find this everyone just won't choose it um for christians the reason we pursue and we try to get people well real christians the reason we try to get people to understand and like believe is because of the fact that mainly we just want people to experience what we experience this joy this love like we just want everybody to experience this we want everybody to know we want the next generations to know to come you know but some people just won't accept it and that's god knew from the beginning he predestined he like he knew from the jump that there were certain people that weren't gonna accept him and that's okay i guess um so that's why I'm saying find what works for you, but I'm speaking specifically to Christians when I say find what works for you. Um, just finding, I th these are the two main ways that I would go about finding what works for you. And I actually wrote them down. I just want to make sure I'm staying true to what I wrote down and what um, God gave me. I said, <laughs> I like this. I said, I won't ever believe in anything else because I found what works for me. I just I love that I promise this is like this is it for me like God is it for me I found what works for me I found what keeps me away from that dark place I found everything that I needed everything that I wanted everything that I was craving I found purpose I found all of that when I found God um and I left depression so like I said I'm sold on this but I just 
I just wanted to read that because I did write that down. Um, yes, finding what works for you. The two main ways, I would say if you're first, first starting or first, what are you trying to say? I would say if you're first starting out, um, trying to cultivate a relationship with God, the main thing I would do to help you find it is surrounding yourself, like try to find some godly people, some true, I want to say that, I want to iterate this word, true godly people, so people that are really living in truth and surround yourself with them, like, why do I keep burping? Um, surround yourself with them, uh, talk to them seek knowledge from them seek wisdom from them seek whatever you can seek from them just like i don't want to say like what's the word i'm looking for just surround yourself with them pretty much um make sure you talk to them like on a constant basis because they will help you because when you can't hear from god they can hear from god and they can be the mouthpiece for god to tell you certain things so definitely having some people having a good inner circle that are truly that is truly rooted in God will help you so much because when you can't hear from God and you feel alone and you feel whatever you feel like he'll send them like even when you're in a moment like God I feel like I can't hear you I can't you know I feel like I'm not receiving anything from you I feel like I'm, you know like I just feel numb like you could be alone in that moment and that person just call you or somebody from your circle just call you and be like, listen, hey, God, just push you on my heart. Like it happens so much. You won't even listen. God sets us up a lot. So just let me you know you're going to get set up. But it's like the reward for, from the setup is just it's amazing. It's always great. But um, and then the second thing for finding what works for you is, oh, I found it. I just thought about something else. Um, the second thing, though, for finding what works for you is developing your secret place. So this one is a little bit more complicated than, of course, having somebody else there to help you, you know, to, like, give you instruction. This one requires you to, one, get to know God, um, feel his presence, have an encounter with him, speak to him. Just that one-on-one -on -one time with God in your secret place, it could be anything, like, um, he could be like, okay, read your Bible and I'm going to give you a revelation of my word um, in a secret place. I just want to, it could be he just wanna, wants to encounter you and you just want to encounter him. So it's just an encounter in your secret place. Like it could be anything. It could be him speaking to you. Like, and some people have strict, like, this is, this is what happens in my secret place. Me, whatever happens when I get there is what happens. But yeah, God will definitely reveal to you like what you should be doing, what you shouldn't be doing, and um, He'll just let you know. He'll let you know if you're if you're truly seeking God, like if you want God true and unadulterated. That's the word, right? Let's look it up. Siri, what does the word unadulterated mean? Unadulterated means not mixed or diluted with any different or extra elements. Complete and absolute. Siri said it first, no, I'm playing. But um, if you want just the true truth for yourself, find your secret place. Let me find the scripture real quick. I promise I'm a Christian, y'all. I am so good with remembering stuff that's said in the Bible. I'm just not good with remembering where it was said. But let me see if I can find it. Okay, um, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I'm going to read it in the ERV version too. You can go to God most high to hide. You can go to God all powerful. You can go to God all powerful for protection. Sorry y'all, I'm my mother's child. <laughs> Me and my pronunciations. Um, but anyway, so that is Psalms 91 verse 1. So basically just letting you know like, hey, you have this place. You have this secret place. The secret place that you can run to and you can seek direction straight from god but developing that place is gonna be tough i would say go to a quiet place a quiet room because the secret place is not necessarily a place it's just where you and god you know 
when you got Tango. Tango. Why can't I talk today? I can never talk. Nothing new. But anyway, so yeah, it's just a place where you can just um, go and encounter God. And I would say developing your secret place. Do not get weary in well-doing. That's another scripture, but y'all can Google it and find it. Because <laughs> um, I don't know where it is in the Bible. <laughs> but do not get weary in well-doing. So basically something my mom said, she heard it from somebody, I don't remember who she heard it from. Think about how long it took you to get to the point of, um, like for me, depression was a seven year span. So it took you seven years to get there so it could take you seven years to get out and i don't want to discourage anybody god is too good or too merciful for that like he your journey is forever but i don't think he'll like he didn't take seven years to bring me out i promise you it probably took little less than a year but it's going to take time like you don't just jump in and start hearing the voice of god immediately like that's just has anything in life ever worked that easily? No. So you're not going to just jump in and start hearing the voice of God, but keep going, keep being persistent, keep saying, God, like, I need your presence here. I need to hear from you. I need to talk to you. Keep praying, keep reading the Bible, keep doing that stuff. And you will start to hear from him. Ask him to develop your spiritual ear so that you can hear things from him. Just keep praying to him. Just, just keep seeking. It's going to get it's going to get tough it's going to get frustrating but i promise you the reward of it is like listen god has topped every reward or um this is the word i'm looking for god has just topped it all like you know how you can get something for doing something good yeah god is the best at giving rewarding you for what you okay so yeah the reward is amazing so just keep going keep seeking keep pressing and the last thing i would say to help you um find what works for you is just going off of your convictions like get in touch with your convictions i don't know me like i said it may be me growing up in the church i have always had conviction y'all sometimes i feel like a lot of people silence their convictions and you got to get back to a place where you're not silencing your convictions. Me, I've always listened to my convictions. Even, I don't know, maybe God just had purpose for me like from the beginning. Well, obviously he did. But even when I would silence my convictions, my body would react. So like if I was doing something wrong, my chest would feel like it was sinking to like the bottom of my stomach. <laughs> like, um, and yeah basically that was pretty much it like because i did pretty much silence my convictions i didn't hear i tried not to hear but like i said my body would react so just go based off of your convictions make sure you're listening to your convictions if there's something that you're doing and it doesn't feel right or you like god wouldn't be pleased with this or if god was sitting here in front of me like what would he say go based off of your convictions that's the biggest thing right there because there's one thing that somebody can do and it'd be okay um for them to do it but then you do it and it's not okay for you to do it and that's even with christianity like there's a lot of stuff that i do that other christians are like girl mm -mm, that's not holy but we have to realize that everybody's journey is different everybody is different and we also need to learn to respect each other's um I'm going into something totally different but seriously though like if somebody doesn't respect the fact that this is how you choose to honor God then they you need to let them know it's in the Bible <laughs> um if you want to know if you want to listen if you want to hear about this yeah go to download deeper fellowship app go to latest sermons and type in Jesus heals on the Sabbath and listen to that message because you you'll get your whole life there but if somebody else chooses to honor God one way and you chose to choose to honor God another way, don't judge each other. Don't like just that's the way that they choose to honor God. That's what they feel God has told them. So 
it's okay, you know? So, like, if they do something that you don't do something, or they do something that you don't do something, like, if you do something and they don't do something, it's okay. Because y'all are going based off of your convictions, and at the end of the day, who do you have to answer to? The person who is convicting you. So, yeah. Um, and I think that's it. I think that's it. Um, sorry, my energy got a little bit lower when I came back here. This is my chill zen area. But, um, yeah, I tried to keep it pretty interesting. I need to find some fun content. But I'm going to keep uploading. I know I said I was going to upload every Tuesday. It's just life, okay? Life. But I am consistent. Like, I'm trying to be consistent and keep uploading and keep going. So that, um, I'm sorry. Just a thought. <laughs> a thought. Just, you know, listen, you, when you cultivate that relationship with God, if you have that relationship with God, and you just hear certain thoughts, you be like, mm. But, um, yeah, I'm going to try to be consistent and keep uploading. Did I say every Monday, every Tuesday? I said every Monday. God dog on it. Today is Monday. So I got to go edit this now. But I am going to try to keep trying to be consistent. Um, and yeah, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on this video. Any questions, comments, or concerns, com um, comment down below or ask questions i'm always here to talk not to argue <laughs> so keep that in mind and yeah y'all have a blessed week bye